Call of Duty have just revealed the Season 4 roadmap for Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2. Well, actually, it's no longer called Warzone 2. They've dropped that part of the marketing, and now they're literally just calling it Warzone. I guess there was never really any point in Warzone 2 anyways. In my opinion, they should have just updated the application and the launcher, still called it Warzone, and kept all of the systems and stuff the same, which I guess is what they're probably going to be trying to do moving forward. Now the marketing is just Call of Duty. They're just calling it Call of Duty Seasons. They've also changed the Call of Duty logo and the font, and personally, I'm not really a big fan of it. It looks kind of unprofessional and clunky and jagged. If you look at the roadmap as well, the font they have for the text looks really strange to me. It just looks a bit unprofessional, like one of the fan-made roadmaps that you see people use for uh, placeholder thumbnails on YouTube. Anyways, the season is going to be releasing next week on June 14th, and I'm going to break down everything coming in the update. Of course, the biggest thing that's coming is there is a new Warzone map, which is Vondal, based off of Vondal Park by Amsterdam, and I'm really excited for that. It's going to be bigger than Ashika Island. You're going to be able to play it on not just normal Battle Royale, but also Resurgence. The thing that is the most important to me, though, is regarding Episode 4 of Raids, because plans have changed. As you know, there was originally supposed to be five raids to correspond with five seasons for Modern Warfare 2, which actually was supposed to be six seasons, but that got cut short, since there was supposed to be a second year of DLC, but that has been turned into Modern Modern Warfare 3 if you've been keeping up with the leaks and rumors. Anyways, there's now only going to be four raids instead of five, so the final raid will be coming in Season 4 Reloaded. We have a little bit of a preview of it here that you can see on screen. It's not even mentioned on the roadmap, and I guess the reason as to why they're cutting the raid short is probably not enough people are playing the raids for them to justify spending all of these resources and dev time working on them, and I posted a video the other day saying that I feel like the developers have been trying to create way too many modes to try and please way too many people, and I feel like a lot of the resources for raids, for example, although I think they're pretty good, I think not many people are playing them and they don't have much replay value, and I feel like a lot of these resources should have gone into something else. I'm really interested in the lore side of the raids and the storyline that they provide, but I feel like that could have been done as a part of a campaign DLC or something like that, as opposed to the raids. I just feel like so little people are playing them, and clearly that is evidenced by the fact that they've cut the raid short, which originally there was probably supposed to be six, it got cut to five, and now we're only getting for, unfortunately, and it is going to be featuring a new skin that you can unlock for Farah too. The thing is, though, they said prepare your trio for the exciting conclusion to the raid series before Redacted. Now, we're not sure exactly what Redacted is, however, I'm assuming this is probably Modern Warfare 3, because the storyline for the raids is going to continue and tie directly into Modern Warfare 3, of course. The last raid, we, of course, just found Hadir deep within the bunker, and he confronted us and Farah. I guess in the final raid, we're going to figure out what Hadir is up to, and that'll probably tie into the Makarov no Russian post credit scene for Modern Warfare 2, which I'm guessing is probably going to be the opening for Modern Warfare 3's campaign. So yeah, considering there's only four raids now, there's not going to be a raid in Season 5. Is there going to be something to replace the raids in Season 5? We know that there is going to be apparently a live event in August to reveal Modern Warfare 3, but is there going to be something else in Season 5? We are going to be finally seeing another Halloween event, which is going to be the Haunting of Almazra. I'm really excited for that. The last two Halloween events were awesome, but unfortunately we didn't get one for Vanguard, and I'm wondering if Season 5 could just be marketed as a big Halloween season, as opposed to it just being Season 5. We'll have to wait and see, though. I am disappointed to see the final raid cut. Like I said, I'm guessing a lot of content from Modern Warfare 2 has been cut because the developers have been forced to then move over to Modern Warfare 3, working on that instead, and a bunch of remakes, for example, that should have come to multiplayer are probably being saved for Modern Warfare 3. It does suck that the post-launch content for Modern Warfare 2 has been held back for Modern Warfare Warfare 3. Pre-release, they were talking about the biggest post-launch season ever. I know this is the marketing they use every year, and I'm sure the developers actually intended this, but unfortunately, the shady higher-ups at Activision were like, why we need a new Call of Duty this year? As they were originally going to go biannually, a new COD every other year instead of every single year with, you know, a big expansion in between. And unfortunately, they've changed their plans. It sucks the way they manage Call of Duty. It's just a never-ending crunch cycle for the developers. They never get to breathe. They never get to relax, and every single game it releases, they hype it up, pre-release, it releases, people are let down, and then the hype train for the next game immediately begins. It's just the COD cycle is just so toxic, and the way that Activision treat the developers and the fans is, again, the toxic, abusive cycle. Unfortunately, there's going to be a Black Cell Battle Pass again. Again, I really don't think there should be a premium, premium Battle Pass in a game that you already have to pay for. It makes sense if this is just something for Warzone, since it's free to play, but if you've bought Modern Warfare 2, you should just get access to this, I think, by default. The fact that you have to pay for the Battle Pass, and then you have to 
to pay again if you want the premium premium battle pass is just ridiculous to me especially because you can't use cod points but yeah the black cell operator doesn't even look that special it looks like the previous one but just they have a cloak on this time we'll have to wait and see what the other items are but i of course won't be purchasing it activision have had really lackluster games the call of duty games over the past two years have been so lackluster of course there's been so many controversies with activision with sa cover-ups and poor workplace conditions and misconduct fair enough if you want to buy the games to play them but really you shouldn't be supporting the microtransactions because it's just furthering them releasing these mediocre games because they know that their revenue is just going to be supplemented by these mediocre microtransactions that are so so overpriced anyways especially when you already have to pay for the full game like i said if the full game was free to play then fair enough it wouldn't be as big of a deal but i won't be surprised if we see more pay to win dmz bundles as well or pay for advantage at least you know they're not fully pay to win but they're getting close anyways before we go further i first have an awesome message to share with you and then we'll be right back with everything coming in this season this video has been kindly sponsored by spark defense which you can check out their alpha demo on steam for free today they have both multiplayer and single player options spark defense is a moba meets tower defense experience with hero driven gameplay an intense adventure of strategy and skill. Adventure is calling. Are you ready? This game has high state gameplay with multiplayer MOBA defense that lets you play your way. Go on the defensive, play it boldly or mix it up. Keep your hero alive and harvester running. Mind spark kite and emerge a champion. Defend your base while exploring and capturing important bases and loot. The game features frozen and jungle themed maps uniquely created to complement their range of heroes. Play solo or online cooperative for up to three players. Defend your base and collect spark kite to craft and upgrade your heroes. And in doing so you're able to obtain in-game cosmetics exclusive to the alpha. Play again and again with an internal leveling system and crafting abilities no match is ever the same. Are you ready to embrace your inner hero and join the ranks of the ultimate defensive challenge? If so, the time has come. Spag Defense brings together an impressive lineup of heroes and unique and powerful abilities. No matter which hero you choose, with gear crafting and increasing threat levels, each match is sure to be a challenge. Choose your hero, gather your squad and play. Go on the defense and protect the harvester or play it boldly by taking on the enemies head on and even strategize with your team. Spark Defense offers endless possibilities for excitement and strategy. So what are you waiting for? If this game sounds like a blast of fun, you can download Spark Defense today by clicking the link in the description or via the pinned comment and experience the thrill of multiplayer mobile defense at its finest. And with regular updates and new content always in development, you'll never run out of new challenges to conquer. You can also check out their Discord to find friends to play with or leave your Steam IDs in the comment section. I hope you enjoy and have lots of fun and make some friends along the way. Like I said, the demo is completely free, so there's literally no reason not to give it a try with its full release releasing later on so be one of the early players before this becomes a massive phenomenon with that being said i'm going to play their full trailer now so you can get an idea of what this game is all about and get you hyped Anyways, let's go over everything that is actually coming in this season. So first things first, a new map is going to be coming, which is Vondal. So apparently the size is going to be somewhere between Almazra and Ashika Island. It's going to be available in DMZ as well for 18 operators, and there's going to be 72 operators for Resurgence game modes. There'll be a mix of densely packed urban streets, canals, large structures to fully explore. Of course, the Amsterdam campaign mission was very beautiful, and I expect this to be very beautiful the same. It was developed by Beanox. There's going to be 15 distinct points 
points of interest. Medieval castle dating back to Saxon times, an abandoned zoo, a Greek revival styled city hall, a soccer stadium, densely packed townhouses, small alleyway cafes, and a variety of other locales to explore. I can't wait to venture through the map and the canals and stuff like that, especially in DMZ. I think it'll be quite fun. There will be a new limited time mode, which is going to be lockdown. This won't be there at the start, but we'll be launching on June 28th, and it'll be played on the new map Vondel. Essentially, it'll be similar to hard points. Multiple squads will capture and hold zones around the map rather than being the last squad standing. Resurgence is also going to be there on Vondel at launch, like I said before, and there's going to be dynamic resurgence timers, which automatically adjust the squad's timers should one or multiple squad members disconnect. Should those squad members rejoin, the resurgence timer reverts back to their normal countdowns. This is a great addition. Resurgence timers should be an equalizer for squads that suddenly find themselves short of an operator. There's a new mechanic that's going to be in all resurgence matches as well, which is a vengeance icon, which will be an icon that is in the direction of the opponent that eliminated your squad mate. The icon merely shows direction, not exact location, and is tied to the death of your squad mate. It's definitely going to increase the speeds of the matches for sure a lot. There is this wolf skin that's coming as well that looks very creepy. Honestly, it looks pretty cool, but I don't buy bundles anyways. The vengeance icon lasts as long as the resurgence timer is on for your squad mate. If your squad mate is down for 15 seconds, the icon only lasts for 15 seconds. If you eliminate this rival, an additional 5 seconds is shaved off of all squad mate resurgence countdowns in addition to the normal evaluation value. Now for DMZ updates. So there's going to be dynamic fog finally coming to the game. They've been talking about dynamic weather for DMZ for a while and we're finally seeing some sort of dynamic weather. We were supposed to get massive storms that would come in. I'm not sure what happened to that. But yeah, Vondel is coming for DMZ. Like I said before, there's going to be a new forward operating base, essential hub for DMZ. The menu system allows operators to complete objectives to win a variety of upgrades to use across DMZ. There's four different categories. We have stash, which is wallet and key stash size increases. We have weapon lockers, insured and contraband armaments and upgrades. We have bounty board for exfil, battering recipes and buy station discounts, communication stations allowing urgent mission access. All the operator upgrades for this forward operating base are passive. They don't need to be equipped and allow for efficient progress across all aspects of DMZ. There's going to be new urgent missions and reputation with faction and wallets. You can read everything on screen right now if you want to do so. There is a new phalanx mission as well and more to come further down the line, including additional details on new and refreshed missions, urgent missions, a Cladinson faction known as phalanx that is redacted and the signal intelligence contract. Apparently we'll learn more about this uh, via a community update on June 9th. However, do not expect the new boss redacted, a vehicle redacted and weapon case rewards such as redacted to be declassified until the start of season 4. So we'll have to learn about that in a bit. There is going to be an aquarium and you can see a shark and loads of fish so I'm wondering if we're going to be able to go in there and fight these animals. That would be pretty awesome. In terms of the dynamic fog though, this is going to be exclusive to Vondel I believe and it allows players to feel more ingrained in the world of Modern Warfare 2. This is going to be for resurgence, barrier modes and also DMZ due to the marine layer. Typically the map is really sunny though. They say especially in Resurgence and Battle Royale, so I'm assuming the fog will come in more often in DMZ than in regular Warzone. There's some new features coming to Warzone as well. We have the Tactical Amphibious Vehicle, the TAV, so it can go in water with four passengers. There's a new favorite supply box, which you have to complete the Assault on Vondel event to unlock it. By the way, if you want to pause any of what I'm talking about, I'll just have screenshots of it on screen. And you can also check out Call of Duty's blog, which I will leave linked in this video's description if you want to read it for yourself. There's a Reinforcement Flare, which again, you need to unlock via the Assault on Vondel event. There's a new public event, which is High Stakes. There are going to be taxi cabs on the canals, uh, again, part of the Assault on Vondel event. And the Sandstorm is going to be subsiding in Almazra. It's no longer going to be there. And there's going to be more updates to Warzone in Season 4 Reloaded. There'll be more secrets to uncover in Vondel specifically. I can't wait to try out these old ruins and cathedrals. There is going to be a brand new subterranean gulag, which is going to be for Battle Royale on Vondel, hidden deep within the more medieval parts of the town. In the mid-season is when the return of the Occupation Scan public event and the new quest for Redacted involving Redacted will be available. Now in terms of multiplayer, we're going to be getting a Showdown remake. Of course, it's already a section on Almazra, so it's good to see that it's coming over to multiplayer finally. There's a bunch of other remakes that are in Almazra though, that unfortunately aren't releasing to multiplayer. I'm assuming because they're being saved for Modern Warfare 3, unfortunately. There is going to be a new core map, which is going to be Kunstenar District, which is actually going to be located west of the museum in Vondo. We then have some gunfire maps, which are Mercado, which is a section of Las Almas. We then have Penthouse, set in Chicago, based on the final mission of Modern Warfare 2's campaign. We have My Reserve Marshlands, set in Almazra. It seems to be the destroyed version of the infamous River Diamond Luxury Resort. This is going to be a battle map. And the next battle map we have is Akadar Village. Again, it's going to be another subsection of Almazra. Finally, there's another core 6v6 map that's going to be coming in the mid-season updates. This is going to
going to be set on Vondal, and it's Vondal's Waterfront. So yeah, basically all of the maps we're seeing in multiplayer, unfortunately, are just taken from Almazra, Las Almas, which Las Almas is the new Warzone map that's going to be coming with Modern Warfare 3, all the other Warzone maps. There's going to be some new playlist changes as well. You can read all of the details on screen. Like I said before, there's going to be an Assault on Vondal event. So Nikto is coming as an operator. I'll talk more about that in a second. However, he ties into the Assault on Vondal event as he's a deep cover agent that has taken over Vondal with his cloaked army of mercenaries. As an operator, your mission is to fight back against Nikto's Claddiston army and reclaim the city in the Assault of the Vondal launch event. This is going to be starting with the launch of Season 4 on June 14th and will end on July 7th. So you have quite some time. You can complete challenges which give you medals for personal and local rewards as well as contributing to the Grand Community Medal Count Total. The Wii Community Rewards too. Once a predetermined number of medals are earned, features such as taxi boats and tramways, reinforcement, flare field upgrades, the favourite supply drops which I mentioned earlier and the new rough hitting Tom for melee weapon will be unlocked for all operators to take advantage of. I really like these community rewards, they used to do them a lot in the past. So yeah, like I said, Nikto is going to be coming as a launch operator in the Battle Pass. I'm excited to see him back after we saw him in Modern Warfare 2019. We know that he of course has dissociative personality disorder and he's a former FSB deep cover agent using his menacing signature Black Mask to cover the disfiguration of his face caused by Mr. Z. Of course, Zakaev. A methodical and calculated soldier, a natural born leader who appears to fear nothing. With next to no gaps in his skills, set as the ultimate soldier of fortune. He worked with the CIA to hunt Victor Zakaev in Verdansk, but since October 2022, he's been AWOL until season 4. He will be leading the new special forces group that has taken over Vondal. Whether he's the leader of the group is unknown, but one thing is for certain, he will stop at nothing to ensure the city is his to rule. There's going to be another operator coming, which is going to be sometime around the launch window. It's not going to be at launch though, called Anna Vega. There'll be another operator, which is going to be a bundle coming later in season, which is Izzy, but we don't have any details about them because their intel is redacted. There's going to be another operator called Butch, which is redacted, which is going to be a bundle later in season once again. There's going to be four new weapons, which is going to be the Tempest Razorback Assault Rifle, which is going to be a part of the Battle Pass on launch. We have the ISO 45 SMG, again in the Battle Pass at launch. We have the Tonfer Melee, which is going to be during the launch window, you unlock this as part of the Assault and Vondal event. There are also going to be some new prestige levels and challenges and eye emblems, which you can see on screen. But yeah, that's everything important that I wanted to go over in this video. Like I said before, you can check out the link in this video's description to read the full blog because I skipped over a lot of things in this video because of course it's already very, very long and if I went in depth on a lot of these things, it would just be, uh, you know, way over 30 minutes and I just can't do that. So yeah, if there's anything I skipped over briefly, you can check out the blog in this video's description. Overall, season four doesn't really seem that exciting to me, especially knowing that it's going to be the final raid. I'll be interested in the raid in season four reloaded and the storyline. I'll of course be interested in the live event to reveal Modern Warfare 3 in August, but that's still quite a while away and I'm interested in any of the lore and I'm excited to try out the new Vondal map and mainly in terms of the lore and storyline. But other than that, not really that particularly special of a season. I think Modern Warfare 2, like I've said before, has just been quite bland, unfortunately for me. If you love it, I hope it's go ahead and do so. It's just not been for me, unfortunately. And I'm just waiting for Treyarch's return with Outbreak, of course, in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies and of course, Treyarch's big zombies return in COD 2024. Anyways, thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Call of Duty news and information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.